go ahead and get started here. And then hopefully anyone that's coming in a little late is just missing a little bit of my introduction. But like I said before, this is a jam packed hour long session. And um, I've run this a couple times before and I've started kind of thinking, should this really be an hour and a half session? Because we do go through a lot, but I'm gonna do my best to get everyone's questions answered and make sure that we're moving along at a, at a decent pace and get everyone out of here by one o'clock today. Um, I do see a couple people interacting in the chat, which is great. Thank you for introducing yourselves. I love to see it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself as well, and then we'll go ahead and get started with the session. So first and foremost, um, we are the Temple Small Business Development Center. For those of you that are new to the center, this might be your first session with us. We are part of a nationally accredited network of over a thousand small business development centers across the United States. So we are funded by the Small Business Administration at the federal level. And then each SBDC also gets state funding. So we're in Pennsylvania, so we get funding from the state and then from the local university that we're hosted at. Some states have multiple SBDCs because they're big states. Pennsylvania is a medium state, so we get we get quite a few SBDCs as well. There are actually over 16 small business development center locations in Pennsylvania. And because this webinar is, well, this workshop is a webinar, we are able to offer it statewide. So while we are located at Temple University and our footprint is um, mostly the Philadelphia region, you know, the city of Philadelphia and Lower Bucks and um, Montgomery County, you are more than welcome to join these sessions from anywhere in the state. So there's there might be some of you on here that are from, over by Pittsburgh or up by Scranton. We're happy to have you here with us today. Um, and if you're new to the SBDCs in Pennsylvania altogether, we offer a variety of programming such as the workshop you're on today, but also one-on-one -on -one consulting. So if after this webinar, you're thinking you would really like to learn a little bit more or speak with, an, uh, with a consultant one-on-one -on -one about something specific within your business, you are more than welcome to do so. I can drop a link in the chat as we finish up the webinar, but you can also, you know, Google Pennsylvania SBDC and find the center closest to you. Or if you're, if you know you're in the Temple region, Google Temple SBDC, and we have a huge button to sign up for consulting with us on that website. So with that said, I'm going to do a little brief intro on myself. Why am I the one speaking to you today about marketing on a shoestring? This is actually one of my favorite webinars to teach because um, I use a lot of these tools myself in my roles and my previous roles, and they're all highly useful. But my role at Temple SBDC currently is I'm our digital transformation program manager. So that means I'm in charge of making sure that we provide high quality digital marketing and e-commerce workshops for you, know, you, the entrepreneurs in the community. Some of them I do teach myself. A lot of the time we do like to employ um, guest speakers that, that talk on key areas that they have you know, subject matter expertise in. And we've been really trying to expand the number of webinars we do to to help people in all areas of digital marketing and e-commerce, whether that be utilizing a point of sale system or using QuickBooks or using some of these tools we're talking about today. So um, I'm very excited that we've had that opportunity to provide these things for you. Prior to that, I actually worked at the Delaware Small Business Development Center. So I've been working in SBDCs for quite some time, hopped to the border to Pennsylvania, and I still love what I do. Prior to that, I did some wealth management reporting, business reporting, I did a stint in that. But my marketing background, besides being at SBDCs, is I have marketed for nonprofits and local chambers of commerce in the past. And I'm an entrepreneur myself. I'm a, you know, a consultant on, on the side. So I do nonprofit marketing. I work with multiple universities doing instructional design and academic coaching. Um, Besides that, I have a little bit of a background in international business, if that's ever anything you want to talk about, and also technolo um, technological and commercialization uh, business startups. So anyone in the technological space, um, that's another area that I love talking about. Um, as you can see, lots of areas of small business that I'm pretty passionate about. Um, what I will say is, I'm just checking the chat here. We have a lot of people introducing themselves, which I love. Um, if you've been on our sessions before, you might have seen me speaking or you might have seen me as a moderator. Right now, I'm doing both. I'm doing double duty. So if I pause at any point in the presentation, it's because I'm checking the, the Q&A or the chat. Um, but like I said, I do love to see everyone engaged here. And um, I, uh, you know, I'm happy to see that someone just put a, a chat, you know, something about um, about some of the things I've been doing. So that's great, I'll say, it. awesome. All right, perfect. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get us started here because I don't wanna delay any more time. It's already 12.08 and I wanna make sure we can get through everything, like I said. 
So just to give you a brief outline, I'd like to give people an idea of what to expect in the webinar. We are gonna go over what marketing on a budget even means. So obviously you are all on the call today because you want to learn some really great useful tools for low cost and no cost budgeting when you're uh, doing marketing for your small business. But I like to explain what that means in a little bit more context first, but I don't wanna spend a crazy amount of time on it. And then where to start, right? Um, where will you start in your marketing, uh, marketing plan and with your marketing projects and everything like that? I'll spend quite a bit of time on Canva because I know a lot of people love Canva. If you've never heard about it, don't worry. I'm going to spend some time on it. We're going to talk and you're going to find out how much you will also love Canva. I'm going to talk about some other items like Unsplash and Pixabay and Hootsuite. And then I have about six or seven other tools that I'm going to tell you about so you know that what they are, what they can do for you, and then you can make the choice on if you want to use them or not. So we're not going to do a huge deep dive into any one tool. The goal here is to show you there are so many tools to help you. And especially as an entrepreneur, I know that being budget conscious and time conscious is so important. And you just don't know what you don't know. You don't know that these tools can help you if you don't know they exist. So hopefully this is going to give you some really great next steps. Um, and then I'll also give you some next steps and we'll open it for Q&A. So with that said, there are a couple breaks in my presentation where I will pause and we can take a couple quick questions. Um, because I'm flying a little solo right now, I will only take questions at those breaks just because it's really hard for me to view the Q&A and um, present at the same time. But if, you, if a question comes into your mind during the presentation, please put it in the Q&A right then and there so it doesn't leave your head and I'll get to it at a, at a good breaking point. All righty. So like I said, we're going to start really quickly with just a brief overview of what is marketing, what is marketing on a budget, why are you at this webinar today? Um, you're probably thinking, well, obviously, Sarah, I want more customers, and to get more customers, I need to do marketing. But marketing is a little bit deeper of a, a subject and a science than that. Um, and there are so many facets of marketing that it can really seem overwhelming, right? I mean, marketing involves being online, utilizing social media, maybe a publicity, like if you're in a high, high touch field, you might want a publicist or a public relations manager. Um, it involves doing marketing research to even know who you're trying to market to because you can't just market to everyone the same way, right? There's some key marketing buzzwords like branding or target segments, things like that where you wanna make sure that you're reaching the right people with the right message. You might pay for advertising, you might do direct marketing like door-to-door -door sales or handing out flyers. Um, your pricing strategy could even be a marketing strategy depending on how often you give out discounts and things like that. So marketing is really a huge field um, and there is so much you can do in this space. But to sum it all up, I think this article from the New York Times in 2017 said it really well. They said, marketing is the art of telling stories so enthralling that people lose track of their wallets. So what you as a small business want is people to see the marketing you're putting out there and say, you know what? I want that product. And I almost don't even care about the price. That's what you want. You want them to be so engaged with whatever content you put out that they will go to your social media and check it out more or call the number at the bottom of the message or go to your website or whatever that call to action is. You want them to be so engaged that they move forward with that next step. So what is marketing on a budget? Marketing on a budget um, is a way to market in a way that obviously conserves money, but also brings results. So I didn't make this slide to be redundant. It's because I want to drive home that point that marketing needs to bring results. Um, there's no point in being on all manners of social media and paying for advertising and paying for Google ads and whatever else you're doing if you're not seeing the results also. Um, and even with free things, you might say, oh, well, you know, getting on social media is free or some of these tools you're gonna use us are free, um, but it's also conserving your time, right? Time is money. And you don't wanna waste a ton of time on things that aren't giving you any return on investment. You know, you are a small business. Your time is important. Your money is important. So when we talk about marketing on a budget, it's how do I conserve money but still bring the results? And that's the important second half of that question. I do put this FYI on this slide just so you all, you know, you know what kind of kind of the standard is in small businesses. But the U.S. Small Business Administration does recommend that um, small businesses spend seven to eight percent of gross revenue in marketing and advertising, and that is a statistically pulled percentage. So small businesses on average do invest seven to eight percent of their revenue in marketing. And I know this is a webinar all about low cost and no cost, but I'm just letting you know that as you grow or you might, you know, 
outgrow some of these tactics and tools. Um, many small businesses like yourself are actually utilizing marketing on a semi-paid basis as well. So that's just an objective observation, not pushing you to pay for advertising or not pushing you to pay for you know, marketing and advertising, but just letting you kind of know where, where the standard lies when it comes to being a small business. But today's webinar is on marketing on a budget, right? So this little head over here on the right kind of gives you a couple ideas of how you can market. A lot of them are low cost options like getting uh, email marketing or maybe putting a website up using social media is obviously one of the most popular and low cost options to utilize. But some of these cost more like print advertising or direct mail. I mean, that can really be um, expensive and honestly are not the most popular ways to reach people anymore. So over here on the bottom, I have how to accomplish marketing on a budget. And I'm gonna give you a couple quick ideas. One is blogging. So if you have a website or if you just wanna have a separate blog or even create like a, a journal, like a photo journal on your Instagram or something like that, blogs are very popular for engaging a client and making your business seem more human. So one of the most interesting things about marketing as we move through the 21st century is we've moved past the point where people um, have any interest in cold calls or anything like that. They are not interested in just finding, you know, getting random spam and junk from people they don't know. We're moving past the point where social media and it kind of showing up on shared social media and stuff like that is having as much traction as it used to be. It used to be very fun and new when social media was new, but it's kind of declining a little bit. And actually we're in a third wave of marketing right now where the most popular way to get people is through that organic human element. You can still use social media and your online presence to create an organic human element, but that's where it's really drawing people is that story of how you became a small business and maybe you have a family or maybe you're, you know, maybe you don't have a family. Maybe you have some other passionate story about how you love to travel or how you've worked in the mechanical industry for X amount of years. That's the kind of stuff that people are engaged in. So blogging is completely free. It's just you writing stories to paper or stories to computer. Um, and it's a really cool way to start engaging people that costs you no money. Having a presence on YouTube and social media, same thing. Very low cost, no cost if you're not utilizing ads. Um, and it's a great way to just get out there and have a presence. If you're interested in learning more about YouTube, I'm actually teaching an entire YouTube basics for entrepreneurs class next Thursday. So you are more than welcome to hop on that call as well. And I can tell you more about why YouTube is a great free tool for marketing. Um, you can cross promote with partners. So I think a lot of people in the small business space start to worry that, you know, other small businesses are their competition. Trust me, other small businesses are not your competition. Your competition are, are the big wigs. Like, Target or Kohl's or Pep Boys or whatever the big per the big corporation in your industry is. If you're with another small business near your street or you just know another one like your friend or you know, an acquaintance, cross promoting is a great way to um, utilize someone else's following, and it has that organic human element, right? This other entrepreneur is recommending your services or your product. So the people following them are going to trust that more. So that's another great way to think about marketing with others. User generated content is free. What does user generated content mean? That's when having a social media presence is really helpful. Let's say you're on Instagram, user generated content would be um, you selling, let's say you sell cupcakes and you sell a cupcake to a young girl and she loves the cupcake, she thinks it's beautiful. She takes a picture, puts it on her Instagram and tags your business and says, I just got this amazing cupcake from Sarah's Bakery. You have to go there. You didn't pay for that. You didn't ask her to do that. That is user generated content. And the more organic and human of a persona you can give your business and the more of a presence you have on social media, the easier it is to get user generated content. So those are a couple quick ideas, but that's not why we're here today. Those are just other ones to think about. Because of course the big one is use free tools. How do you accomplish marketing on a budget? You can use a ton of really great, really free tools. So we're gonna hop right into that in a second because I would be remiss if I didn't step on my soapbox for one minute here and say, when you want to start, you can't just jump right in and say, oh my gosh, yes, Sarah, there's so many awesome tools. I'm just gonna start using them. No, 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 we gotta slow down. Wait a second here because you need to have a plan. 
I kind of hinted at this earlier, right? I don't, I don't want to be, you know, a broken record, but you need to have a marketing plan to create a successful program for your business. So I broke it down into five really key areas first is you need to do some market research. I know that sounds boring, but we have a ton of staff at the SBDC that specialize in market research that can help you through something like this, or just spend 30, 40 minutes to an hour on your computer looking at demographics, like use, utilizing the US Census Bureau. They have a ton of free information on how many people live in a geographic area, how many are what age, how many are men, how many are women, um, and start trying to figure out who are you trying to reach and where are they? Um, when we do our social media series webinars that we've been doing every month, one of the things we talk about is what demographics are on each so social media site, right? For example, if you're selling um, hearing aids, you might not wanna sell them on TikTok exclusively because TikTok does not really cater to people in the 60 and up, you know, or 55 and up user group. Um, so things like that. So you really need to define your market so you know where you want to market to. Um, you have to clearly have a described product, right? So one of the, the things about marketing is whether you use these tools or not, people need to know what you're talking about. One of the easiest things that I've told people is use the napkin test. Get a napkin, you know, that little tiny napkin and write or draw what you're trying to relay about your product. And if it can't all fit on that napkin or people can't immediately figure out what it is, you need to simplify that, especially when people are on social media or online, their attention span is about two seconds. It's really small. They're scrolling, they're scrolling. It needs to draw their attention immediately. So it needs to be really clearly described and obvious to them what they're looking at. Next, you wanna think of your marketing strategies. So over here on the left, I have a couple of strategies you can define. You know, are you going where your market is? Are you thinking about doing direct marketing, advertising, writing articles? You have to figure out what you want your strategy to be. And there's nothing in the rule book that says you can't start with one and then move to others. I actually encourage that a little bit so you don't overwhelm yourself. Um, but each business is gonna be different, right? Someone in the retail space versus someone who's a, you know, solopreneur consultant versus someone in the service industry, like um, auto uh, I'm sorry, automobile servicing, things like that, you're gonna have a different strategy, but you wanna at least set a couple ideas in motion. And I encourage you to write it down. Just take a couple bullets, like this is where I think I want my marketing strategy to go. Like I said, doesn't have to be an arduous process where you're ruling over it for hours. Um, try to define a bit of a budget. Like I said, everything we're talking about today is gonna be no cost. Um, I will show you the, the cost options for a lot of these because you can go from free to premium just so you know what the, what's out there. But if you don't have a budget at all, define that as a zero and put everything that you're utilizing that's at zero dollars. But if you're thinking you might want to engage in advertising or other things, look up the prices first. You know, Take a look at what's out there and how much it costs. And in the grand scheme of things, you might end up making calls one way or another. And then, like I said, set those marketing goals. So I just talked about that on the other slide, right? What is your goal from this marketing? Are you trying to gain 10 new customers a week? Are you trying to gain 20 new followers on your Facebook? Um, are you trying to get repeat customers to come back? What is that goal? And try to set a goal too and make it realistic. But if after a couple of weeks, you're noticing that you're not getting new sales, you're not getting new followers, you're not getting whatever it is you were trying to get from your, your marketing strategies, you might wanna relook at it and tweak it a little bit, change it, change what you're doing. Some of the tools I'm gonna to talk to you about today are gonna to help you with that. But I just, I'm gonna put that out here at the beginning is all of these tools are great and very useful, but you have to have a starting point. So I don't wanna just blindly throw people into these tools without them thinking through what their marketing strategy will be. But what is out there, right? Sorry, I, I know everyone wants me to just get to the punchline, but there are so many tools out there and these are just a sprinkling of them. These all have free options. And like I said, we're gonna talk about a ton of them today. Um, some of the ones that were not like Constant Contact, for example, I'm not gonna talk about that one very much today. That's an email marketing tool, but we do have a Constant Contact webinar series that's going on. And the next one is on Monday at 10 a.m. So like I said, feel free to check out our, our website if you want to register for one specifically on Constant Contact. We do do a, a, a couple of these other ones I will be talking about today, but the list just goes on and on. So 
these are just a sampling so that you can come back. You all will get a copy of this PowerPoint. You can take a look, research some of these, but I'm gonna show you some of my personal favorites and we're gonna go over them in an order that makes sense for you and your business. So I'm gonna pause really quickly, take a look at the chat and the Q&A, and then we're gonna look at, like I said, I organized this to show you tools in the order you would need them, right? So let's say you defined your marketing strategy. The next thing you're gonna to need to do is design your content. So we're gonna walk through tools that will help you design your content, find pictures for your content, how to post your content, et cetera, et cetera, in that order that you would need them, which I think makes the most sense. Um, so let me just check the chat here. Yep, someone said the SBDC helped them get market research. Yep, that's a, a standard thing that we always offer. So please do take advantage of that, especially if you're unsure of how to do that yourself. And then someone asked, will we be getting a copy of the presentation? Okay, yes. So yes, you will. I'll be sending a copy of the recording so you get to hear me talk um, and a copy of the PowerPoint as a PDF file you will also be getting. How do you sign up for the YouTube video next week? It is on our website. And at the end of this PowerPoint, I have a link to it. So when you get this PowerPoint in your email, it has a direct link. I already thought that part through. Um, so you'll see it as we get to the end, but these are all great questions. All right, so designing your marketing content, right? This is where we're all excited to go. How do I design my marketing for free, especially if I don't know really a lot about marketing or even designing? In a previous world, and by a previous world, I mean even five years ago, it was really hard to make beautiful marketing content if you had no graphic design experience, your only options were Word, PowerPoint, unless you paid for like Adobe Photoshop, Adobe, Adobe Premiere, those kinds of things. And even then, those Adobe products were really difficult to use. I use them sometimes. I will still admit that they're not very user friendly and you have to pay for them. But back then, that was really the only options people had, or you know, draw it yourself and make copies of it at the local staples. I mean, but it was really hard to make something fresh and precise and professional. But now we have this really beautiful tool called Canva. So I just would love to hear in the chat really quickly if you could just put a yes or no, have you used Canva before? All right, we got some yeses, some nos. All right, awesome. All right, seems like a pretty mixed bag. So I, I, I wanna spend an, an appropriate amount of time on this to make sure that the people who said no understand what it is. But for those of you that have said yes, um, hopefully we'll, you'll learn some new tips and tricks to use Canva. Um, and if not, it'll just be a, a really quick refresher before we move on to the other tools. I do see that two participants also have their hands raised. If you can just, if you had a question, put them in the Q and A or chat. All right, someone's a Canva Pro user, awesome. So you're gonna love you're gonna love Canva. Canva is great for all of you that don't know what it is. You probably could have guessed based off of my intro into this. It's a program that lets you make um, graphic designs and it's absolutely free. Yeah, you heard that right. It is a free program. Um, like someone put in the chat, you can pay for Canva Pro or Canva Enterprise. I'll talk about those in about a slide or two, but there is a free version of Canva. And it helps you make social media graphics, presentations, posters. It helps make a cool Zoom background like I did. Um, there are thousands of templates. So as you can even see in this screenshot image here, you can have um, one that is the correct sizing for a presentation, an eight and a half by 11 poster, an email header. So it's exactly the right um, small skinny rectangle for uh, an email banner business card size, the right size for an Instagram square on social media, they have it all pre-made for you. So one of the biggest issues with some other templates is you could make an image and then it doesn't fit where you want to put it. That is the most frustrating thing is when you made a really great image and then it doesn't fit in the Instagram square or it doesn't fit on your website and you don't know how to resize it. Um, Canva already has everything sized exactly as you would need it. And if you need some kind of weird off size, you can customize a size as well. So just from that perspective alone, it's a really useful tool. And even as you can see here, it gives you a bunch of templates that you can pre-use. So we're gonna go over that in a second. The only thing I will say is in free Canva, if you're not utilizing Canva Pro or Canva Enterprise, if you're just in free Canva, they, they do make you pay for some of the images. So we'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second, but they provide you a ton of free images to use. But if you want a premium image, and unfortunately Canva is smart and they know that a lot of businesses are on here. So most of the premium images are images of like business people and, you know, stuff that we as entrepreneurs want. Um, you would have to pay a dollar per image. 
but hold on to that because some of the other tools I'm going to show you are going to be a workaround for that. I'm, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but just, just pause on that. I don't recommend buying premium images off of Canva if you're Canva free. So let's say you found a template on Canva that you really liked. So I'm going to go back one second here. This is what Canva looks like for those of you that are brand new to Canva. As soon as you go on canva.com, click sign up, you make a login. This is what it'll look like right off the bat. It'll give you your name. It'll say, do you want to create a design? All your designs is right there on the homepage. So you can look at all of the things you've made in the past. You can search for a specific thing or it gives you a bunch of recommendations. So let's say you were scrolling through this list here and you said, oh, I didn't want a business card or an email header or a poster. Just type in the search bar what you were looking for. Zoom background, Facebook event photo cover, you know, any of that. And it'll, it'll pop up for you. But let's say you want to make a flyer. And you clicked on the flyer and it gives you an auto template to start. The template I picked was Hand Washing 101. And it already has all this really great information on here. So if I was a small business and I wanted a Hand Washing 101 flyer, the good news for me is it's already made. But nine times out of 10, you're looking for something a little bit different, but you might like the design functionality here. So you can see right up here at the top, you start off in templates. And these are all flyer templates because you said you wanted a flyer. You don't have to pick hand washing 101. You can pick one that looks like this. You can pick one that looks like this one or this one. You can change the color once you're on it. So let's say you like the design with the one, two, three, four boxes, but you don't like that it's blue. Well, you can change the background. You can make it green, red, purple, pink, whatever you want. You can also go in and edit any of these. So even if you're a super not graphic design savvy, Let's say you wanted this instead to be hand washing 101, you wanted it to say our services. You can actually go right in here, change it to say our services, remove what these little like fake template um, paragraphs are and have it list your four services that you offer. You can switch out pictures and I'll show you how to do that in a second. And let's say you hated the font, you can also just highlight it just as if you were in Word and pick a different font. That is the easiest way to use Canva. Obviously, you can start moving things around. Let's say you didn't want the, the four boxes, you just wanted two. You could like up and move these right off, delete them, make these ones slightly bigger. Um, don't want to get too fancy in there right now, but even from a very simple perspective, if you're thinking, I really don't feel comfortable moving around boxes and stuff yet, you can use this very easily, just changing the words, changing out the pictures. And like I said, there are over hundreds of thousands of templates here, so I'm sure you could find one that is of interest to you. But as you probably saw, I'm sorry, right here, they have a list of other really cool things you can do in Canva. And I said it was free, remember? So this is just a free service where you can make graphics. Um, we looked at the templates, but let's say you picked a template you like. There's a couple other things here I just wanna really briefly go over. Like I said, templates is the first one. Uploads lets you upload an image or a logo or a template if you had one yourself. So I, I'm not showing that one here, but let's say, your business has a logo and you wanna upload it to Canva so it can be on all of your flyers, you just click the upload button, find it on your file manager on your computer and pull it in. Or if you want to pull in a different image or something else to put on your flyer, you can upload anything you want and then drag it to the flyer. So that's what uploads means. And then the next one is photos. So like I said, besides offering thousands of templates, it also offers you thousands of photos. So let's say you really like this success flyer over here on the left but you don't want it to be this really sweet looking guy you would prefer it say you know you prefer it be a picture of food because you're a chef maybe you can go under photos click search and search for photos of chefs or photos of food restaurants or if you even like let's say you specifically wanted it to be spaghetti type in spaghetti pictures will show up what you can do in canva that is very user friendly is you can find the image you want click it you have to write i'm sorry left yeah, left click it. Ooh, I had to think about that one. Is that bad? <laughs> and then once it's clicked, just drag it. Drag it into your template and it'll automatically replace the photo that was there in the right size. Every once in a while, the sizing might get a little wonky and you can just kind of update it. But for the most part, Canva is really good about just pushing it right into that spot. So it makes it really easy to also find the template and then you can change the words, you can change the image. You can change the color, you know, so there's a lot you can do here, like I said. You can add elements. So I don't want to get, you know, overzealous for those of you that aren't super familiar with graphic design, but let's say you want to 
add a new picture, but you wanted it to be in a squiggly frame instead of a circle frame. So when I go, like, like if you look over here, you, um, where my arrow was pointing, this is the hand washing um, flyer I pulled up on the other slide, right? And these are circles. But let's say you really wanted it to be circle with squiggles around it. You could just bring, once again, left click, pull that in, and then you'll have a new area for a photo that is squiggle lines or a rectangle or like these guys, shutters. I mean, you can do a lot there. You can even add stickers, charts, emojis, a bunch of random stickers and stuff are on there too. I mean, it's just an endless amount of random things you could stick on there. For example, see how this person had like um, circles. This one has a little hand with a heart in it. You can find all of those under the elements, just finding different stickers and graphics and things. Under text, this is where you can um, look at a bunch of different text options if you didn't want to do it in the template yourself, or they might give you options for like, you know, really big, fancy font that they have made, like huge sale, you know, with half of it being bold and half of it being not. But also you can just look in here for any kind of text you want and what size you want. They kind of start to suggest text sizes for you. But of course, you can always go in and change it from size 20 to 24 or whatever it is yourself also in the template. But like I said, tons of functionality. Next up is styles. This is really great, especially for any of you budding entrepreneurs, or maybe you're even an established entrepreneur, but you haven't really picked a branding for your business yet, which one, I definitely recommend making a brand for your business. Um, but you can make a style that matches the color scheme that you are branding your business with. Now, one thing I will say is Canva Pro allows you to draw your own colors in and keep it there as a customized style. Unfortunately, that's a Canva Pro thing, um, which is the paid version. But even if you're in Canva free, you can pick any of these um, options that they have recommended. And let's say you really like the Beliza, which it, and even and it gives you the fonts, right? That also look good with this color scheme. So it says, you know, get the Beliza font which would be your title font. The majority thin would be like the text font. And then these are the colors that you should pick. You can click that. And then let's say you really didn't like the dark green on the end, you can switch it out. I mean, but it gives you a starting point, especially if you have no experience with color scheming or making things look good together. And even if you already have a color scheme that you have for your business, um, if you don't have Canva Pro, it won't save it for you, but you can always go in and add it in yourself, you know, add it in every time you make a graphic, I will say. <laughs> so that is a little tedious, but it is an option if you're in Canva free. But otherwise, you have all of these pre-made options they'll give you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on audio video because this is an intro to Canva. But if you want to talk offline with me about getting fancy in Canva, we always can. Um, audio and video is implemented so you can even make little um, snippet videos and add audio to things. And really, especially since video marketing is so popular these days, you can start adding that in. And by the way, you can also make that in Canva. Um, and then last but not least, there's one called background, which just gives you photos that are meant specifically for backgrounds. As you can see, it's like a brick background or a desert background. Um, they're not the same as photos because these ones are meant to be in the back. So they just kind of segment it out for you to make it easier for you to find what you're looking for. And then last but not least, if you click the three buttons at the bottom, you can find ways to integrate with other apps, like adding emojis or integrating right in with your Facebook for your business, um, in, in doing your Google Drive or using Pexels or Pixabay, which some of you might be asking, what are those things? And I'm going to tell you in a second. Um, but it's really great that it integrates with all of those other apps. So. One thing I'm just going to say really quickly in the middle of our Canva is if, if you are one of those people who is looking at, especially the part where I was talking about color design and you're thinking, I have no idea what color design I want and I don't want to use one of the Canva ones because I want it to be unique and for my business only, go to coolors.co. It is also a free tool. So this is a free tool tutorial in a free tool tutorial. But um. It's great in Canva, it's great on your website. So if you're working with a marketing agency or a web designer or doing your website yourself and you're trying to figure out what color palette you want to be for your business, coolors.co is a color scheme generator. So it can help you, it, like if you have no idea where you wanna start, you can just click start the generator and it'll start pulling randomly colors that all look good together. Um, if, you, if it pulls up a purple that you really like, 
you can lock it and then have the rest keep randomly sorting. Find another one you like, lock it, randomly keep sorting, and it'll show you the five colors, which is normally two primary and three secondary colors for your business, right? That's normally the color scheme people would have when they're doing marketing. But this is a great tool to find colors that work for your business. So like I said, if you're in Canva free and you're trying to figure out what kind of color scheme you want, you can go to poolwars.co. Um, if you have Canva Pro, which is on the next slide, they let you save your brand right in it. You know, so you do have to pay for Canva Pro, unfortunately, to get that feature. But using coolors.co or the free, you know, options that they have in Canva, you can maybe find something that really works for your business and you want to have all of your marketing cohesive, right? So even when you're making all of your graphics, if you're making them all in Canva, you still want to have a pretty um, cohesive color scheme. You know, you don't want one of your pictures to look like this and the other one to be bright orange. I mean, it's not going to look the same. People aren't going to know necessarily that they're both from you. So you want to make sure that you have that and Canva makes it really easy to do so. So what can you do with Canva though? So you might all be looking at this and going, that was a great intro to Canva, Sarah. That was really cool looking. I want to try it myself. But what can I do with Canva to increase my marketing presence? Because this is marketing on a budget. So Canva, besides making amazing graphic designs, should be able to help you market your graphic designs. Um, one of the things that you can do besides making flyers and business cards and all of that is social media cover photos is one of the most popular reasons to use Canva. Because like I said, it has it in the preset sizing, a Twitter um, cover photo versus a Facebook cover photo versus a LinkedIn cover photo. They're all completely different sizes. It automatically gives you that and you can make cover photos that have a call to action, right? Call to action is one of my favorite things to talk about in marketing. When you have anything on social media, you want it to be really clear why people are reading about it. And most of the time it might be because you want them to buy your product or to reach out to you. So you can make customized cover photos in Canva, put them out and it could have your phone number on it or your website or something else um, and make it easier for people to find you. Canva also does Instagram stories. So for any of you that are a little savvier in Instagram, you might know that besides making, <clears throat> excuse me, like static posts, you can make little snippet stories that only are around for 24 hours, kind of similar to Snapchat, if any of you are familiar with that one. I'm not gonna just assume everyone knows all social media, um, but you can make an Instagram story also in Canva, which is great, and it, it'll just send it over. So that is a really cool integration, I'm sorry, integration. You can highlight reviews like I have over here on the right. So a lot of the time you as um, a small business want to highlight when people said something nice about you, whether it be on a Google review or they wrote you a nice email and you say, hey, is it OK if I share this quote? And they say, sure. But you don't want to just stick that out on Facebook with, you know, or maybe stick it out on Facebook in the description and then just like have a picture. I mean, it's not as visually appealing. You can create a little blurb in Canva like this and put that out as a social media post or even put it right on your website. That's a great way to lift the reviews that you have. Canva is easy to share with others. So let's say you're working with other people, you can share um, Canva documents with other people and work on them at the same time, which is really convenient. And like I said, brand consistency. You can make sure everything looks the same, has the same colors, has the same vibe. Maybe they all have the same template you know, pattern that you've been using. Um, so there's really a ton of functionality there and a ton of ways to use it to lift your website, to lift your social media, to lift um, flyers that maybe you're sending out in person. It's just a really great tool to use, especially for people who have no idea how to use graphic design. A lot of it is just click and pull, click and pull, type what you want. Um, so I love it. Personally, if you see any of our graphics, all of our graphics are made in Canva, total disclaimer. I, I use Canva all the time. So <clears throat> how are you feeling about Canva? <laughs> I see a lot of people in the chat. Um, someone said in Canva free, you can save three custom colors. Okay, that's great, Wendy, thank you. Yeah, so you can't do the full brand template in Canva free, but you can do the three colors. So if you only had three colors, that's a great, great thing to know. Um, Yes, some people are asking about InDesign. InDesign is great um, for books and magazine layouts, like you said, uh, uh, Chiquita, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm totally sorry, Chiquija, but um, it is paid, right? InDesign you have to pay for, but it is one of those popular Adobe InDesign. Like I said before, if you know how to do graphic design, but Canva is awesome for people that um, are not familiar with that. 
I guess someone said I do a lot of my stuff in Canva. Canva does do the heavy lifting, yes. So um, I didn't put this up here just to be funny right now, the how are you feeling? I mean, you can let me know how you're feeling, which I would love to hear. But also, let's say this was the graph if you wanted and you're ready to get it out of Canva. Um, this one is actually a video, but you can have it say download. It'll say download video or download graphic, whatever it is. And you can either download it right to your computer. You can share it to Facebook or send it to a Facebook business page automatically. So let's say you had a Facebook business page for your business and you want to post that graphic right then and there, it automatically will integrate and just send it. Um, it'll do that with Twitter and a couple other, you know, other um, apps as well, like we saw in the app integration. So very robust, very easy to use. Um, and then I told you all to hold on for a second with the paying for the premium images, right? So let's say you're in Canva free and you want cool images, but you don't want to pay the dollar per image. There are a ton of websites out there that give you beautiful stock level images for free. And here's three of them. Unsplash, Pexels, and Pixabay, they all do pretty much the same thing. You can go on and look for a stock image and they are freely usable. That means you can use them in your social media, you can put them on your website. It's always nice if you can put, you know, um, a little thank you to the person who took the picture because they're putting them out for free, but it's obviously not a requirement of using these websites. They're royalty free. And um, they don't have any watermarks or anything. So if you find an, if you're in Canva free, but you want really nice images and you're annoyed that all of the images in Canva that you wanted are paid ones, go on to Unsplash, go on to Pexels, find that image, download it, upload it into Canva for yourself. You don't even have to pay for, for the image. So that's a really great use right there. Yes. So um, I'm going to just make sure I'm, I'm getting to these three Q and A's. Okay. Let me just see really quickly. Can you use Canva for a LinkedIn profile banner? Yes, you can, Sue, 100%. And if you go to that search bar at the top of Canva and you type in LinkedIn banner, there's already a pre-made template. And if you follow us on LinkedIn, you'll notice that all of our LinkedIn banners are made in Canva. And then someone said, when I try to upload graphics made on Canva to my website, the graphic is blurry. Um, Renisha, if you want, we can talk offline a little bit more about this, but most often what's happening there is you're not um, making it a high enough quality. So a lot of the time people will download things. What's really great about Canva is you can download that image as basically anything you want. You can download it as a PDF, as a JPEG, as a PNG file, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of the time, especially if you're downloading something as a PDF, which is great for if you were going to go ahead and print it. But if you try downloading an image as a PDF and then putting it onto your website, it comes out blurry a lot of the time. JPEGs can be very similar. So I always download things out of Canva that I'm going to be using as a graphic image, as a PNG file, because that's the highest quality. Um, if that isn't the, the, the thing that's going on with you, we can talk more about offline, how you can like actually go in and change pixelation of a bit uh, a video, um, not a video, of a picture yourself. But um, I can just do like a five minute tutorial offline about that. I don't, that's not like in the scope of this presentation, but it is something that can be done. Um, let me see. All right, I think we got to all the questions here. So that was the intro to making um, graphics, right? So you can make graphics in here. Someone just asked, is there a limitation to how many photos you can use or how many times you use the photos? No, these, this is totally free to use. No, no, does, no, no one can stop you from using it multiple times. No one can say, you know, you have to start paying for this. They're royalty free stock images, you know, like I said, um, all three of them, as many times as you like, you're more than welcome to do so. So just to recap, this was how to design content, right? How to design content for free. You use Canva, you can use these free image websites. And now you wanna schedule that content. So you just went through all of this effort to make these beautiful images. And hopefully they all have calls to action, like I said, or um, have the same branding consistency. So besides me showing you free tools, I'm also kind of giving you some free advice here on how to really lift your marketing. But now you want to market that content and maybe you want to schedule it in advance because you're a really busy entrepreneur and you don't necessarily have the time to market on your own. There are a ton of free scheduling tools. And I think a lot of people hear about some of these tools and think, oh, but you have to pay for that. Oh, you have to pay for that. Some of them like Hootsuite and Buffer actually are completely free if you have the you know, lowest option, of course. Um, I'm gonna really quickly just show you Hootsuite, but it's a social media management tool. So instead of going onto Facebook, every time you wanna send something on Facebook, you can just 
schedule it on Hootsuite to go out a week in advance, a month in advance. I think it caps you at six months in advance, but still you can really put things out in advance so you don't have to worry about it later. So that makes your life easier. This is from a marketing on a budget time perspective, right? It's free and it's gonna save you time to just do it all at once. You can send things to multiple platforms. For, for those of you that don't know anything about Hootsuite or Buffer, um, you can connect, let's say your Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and make a post and have it go to all three without having to log into each one individually and post it. So that's a, such a huge win. And on top of that, you wanna make sure your marketing is meeting a goal, right? So Hootsuite or Buffer is a great way to measure the return on investment of your posts because it automatically pulls up little reports like over here where it'll show you how many people engaged with the post or how many people saw it. And if you notice that some people are not engaging as much as one post as another, it might help you decide, you know, do I wanna change my strategy or was there something wrong with the image that I used or was it the wording or whatever it is. Um, so Hootsuite is not only good from a management of your time perspective, but because it helps you measure your marketing, which is so important. You don't wanna waste a ton of time on marketing if it's not gonna do what you need it to do. Um, but here's just a really quick look. If you're doing Hootsuite free, because this is a marketing on a shoestring webinar, you can only use three accounts. So I'm gonna put that disclaimer. So let's say you had the big four accounts like most people do, which is the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, or I, I won't say most entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneurs, but you've probably noticed most corporations and bigger businesses do. Um, if you have all four, you're gonna have to kick one out if you're on the free plan and just manage the three on, on the free but it'll help you schedule posts, et cetera, et cetera. And then just as an FYI, I like to just let you know what you're getting into. If you want to have up to 10 social media accounts, you know, add your LinkedIn, add YouTube or some Pinterest, some of those other ones, you can, it's just $50 a month, which is obviously a bit more pricey. Um, but for free, you can have three, you can schedule up to 30 messages in advance, which is easily like if you're doing one post a day, a good month that you can schedule in advance and you can only have one username and password. Um, but still, it's a very good tool to help you when you're trying to schedule things out. And this is just really quickly what it looks like. So if you're in the publisher, you can just pick on a random day and say, I want this to go out. If any of you have Facebook or even Twitter, you know, you just go on there, you make a status, you can attach an image or attach a link, decide the day and time you want to go out, and then you can look at all of them in advance so you know when they're going out. So this is really great really free. So once you make those beautiful graphics, you want them to go out um, and you don't want to like have to sit on Facebook for a post to go out exactly at 2 p.m. and actually type it up at 2 p.m. You know, you can schedule things. So please take advantage of free tools like that to help you and your sanity when it comes to getting all of your stuff out. And this is what I was talking about, right? You can pick which of your social media you want it to go to, add text, add media, and it'll give you a preview. It always gives you a preview so you know what you're getting into. But all right, I'm conscious of the time. Like I said, I talk a lot, uh, especially about Canva, but there are so many other awesome tools and I'm gonna try getting through all of them the next nine minutes. Um, Cause I don't, I don't wanna waste anyone's time, especially, you know, I, I, I budgeted this as an hour. So I want to make sure that you're all getting the best out of this hour. So what other tools can you use? This is probably the fun part for those of you that knew Canva or Hootsuite already. One is you might've heard of Google Alerts. So that might not be the most, you know, drum roll, please moment. But Google Alerts are really useful for your business. You can set up Google Alerts to search for your name, for your business name, for um, other key things like customer mentions. Um, this is really great for you as a small business. I encourage everyone to do this because it'll help you make your own content. If your business was highlighted in a news article or someone mentioned you in a different article and you didn't know, the Google alert will pull that for you and you can decide if you want to get that once a day, once a week, whatever it is. And you might be able to use that marketing and share it yourself. It also helps you know if a customer mentioned you, whether it's good or bad, you probably want to know that. Um, you can search for your competition. This is a really interesting way to use Google alerts for market research, but you can set up a Google alert for, you know, your competition, whoever you think that is. And, um, if they come up, you can kind of see why they're coming up. Are people saying good things about them, bad things about them? Or did they just open a new location? What's going on with them? Just to keep tabs and even give you advice um, or you know things to think about in terms of what you might want to do with your business. And also it helps you monitor for things like incorrect links. So the worst thing you can have is like an incorrect link to your website or to the page where they pay or you know any of that stuff. Um, so it helps you keep an eye out for that as well. I'm not going to show you how to set up Google Alerts, 
here's the instructions, you're all getting the PowerPoint. But um, many of you probably haven't thought that this is something that's useful to you as a small business. And I 100% say, yes, it is. Um, it will help you find articles and things to share, but it also helps you know when you're being mentioned and when a customer is mentioning you. And they're really, really easy to set up and they just automatically get sent to you. Um, another type of program that does something similar is Feedly. So Feedly um, helps pull articles and things for you, mostly to use on social media and for your blog and things like that. Um, so let's say you wanted to know how often people mention, let's say you're a social media consultant, right? You get paid by a bunch of different businesses to do their social media. You might want to have a pretty robust web presence and you might want to be able to find all of the articles that came out about social media marketing in the last week. Feedly, similar to Google Alerts, will set up um, basically a feed of all of the news, the blogs and everything that has come out recently with that keyword. Feedly goes one step further from Google Alerts because Google only shows things that are on Google. Feedly also shows you things within social media posts and things that are on RSS feeds within websites. So it gives you that extra step to find things that Google Alerts can't find because Google Alerts is searching for web links, you know, and items within webs of web links. This will show you social media posts and RSS feeds and other things. So if you're looking for content about yourself or content to share, right? Because as a social media, you know, um, as someone doing social media, not all of your content can just be about you. You might want to share a couple articles about what's going on in the neighborhood or a quick fun tip or a tip and trick about something you're doing. This will help you find articles that you can then share as content. And it just pulls it all in a feed for you and just pick out what you want. Um, there is a free version and a premium version. The free one will probably do everything you need it to do. The Premium one makes makes things so much more fancy, but as you can see, the free one, you can pull up to up, <clears throat> I can't speak, from up to 100 sources, and it gives you three customized feeds. So let's say you want like a social media feed, a my business feed, and my competition feed or something. But um, still, pulling from over 100 sources is easily more than enough for most people, especially at that beginning. One thing um, that many of you may have heard of but never thought of why you could use for your business is Bitly links. These are also free. So Bitly is a link management platform where you can make links smaller so they're easier for people to type. So like I said, free, go to bitly.com, sign up. But they're used by everyone from individuals to small businesses to Fortune 500 companies. And it makes it easier for people to find information about you. So let's say your call to action in your marketing or in the graphic you just made was that you want people to go register for an event you're hosting. But it has this super long Eventbrite link or super long link on the inside of your website. And it, it might just be easier for people if they could just type it in. Um, and it might be easier for them to remember, right? You can go here and click create. Um, it'll ask you to put a link in on the side and then you can just customize the bottom. Um, this one says Sarah Birch. I, I think this is a premium version of it that I took the picture from, but most of them just say bit.ly slash and then a random string of letters or whatever. You can change that for free on the free bit.ly. You can change it to say Sarah's event 2021 or whatever you want. And then instead of it being you know, eventbrite.com slash blah, 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 or mywebsite.com slash a random string of letters, numbers, letters, numbers. It can just be bit.ly slash Sarah's event 2021. Easier to remember, easier to type, especially if you're trying to send people to a platform regularly, use bit.ly for free to make your website um, links shorter for people to find. So I, I definitely encourage that one, especially if you're someone who's out um, sending links often to, to specific areas. So that one's a really great tool. This is Vengage. Vengage is another free one. So Vengage is similar to Canva, but I don't spend as much time on it because Vengage only does infographics um, and like reports. So it's definitely more for the business minded professional, but they do make very terrific graphics if you're looking to do like you can see here, like a little, um, an infographic is more of like a, an accordion flyer, right? It's very long, very skinny, mostly only viewed in an online format, not printed. But if that's something you're interested in doing with a bunch of tips and tricks or facts on it, or this person had like the three goals for their business on like a report list, Vengage is a free um, tool that does it. It's not as user friendly as Canva, but it's still pretty user friendly, I will say. So once again, a free way to create reports and graphics for no cost. 
One of my personal favorites is Trello. So this is not a marketing tool. This is actually um, a project management tool, but you can use it for marketing. So Trello is used um, for a ton of different reasons. You can keep lists of things and who's doing what, but I um, use Trello for marketing all the time and you can too, whether it's just you or a ton of people that are working with you. Um, but here, I'll just show you really quickly what it looks like. Trello looks like um, a Kanban system. So it's based off of lean business systems, but you can make lists of what you need to do. You can say the ones that are done, the ones that need to come up that are short-term, long-term, et cetera. You can give them little um, colored like labels so you know what they are. Maybe orange means one thing, blue means another for you. You can assign them to people if you had multiple people in your office, or let's say you had an intern doing work for you, you can assign a, um, a marketing project to them, give it a due date, and like keep track of what they're doing in, in the board. And then over here on the left, I have an example of what it might look like specifically for marketing, right? You might put all of your to-dos, like I need to rewrite my Google ads, I need to plan my trip to Beijing, or whatever it is that you're trying to put on Facebook or your social media, move it to in progress, move it to done, each of these, you just click and drag. It's a very easy, oops, sorry, thing to just click and drag things over. Um, and also within each of these, you can write a description, you can add attachments, there's a, you can make checklists, there's a lot of functionality and it's completely free. So this will help you manage your marketing and it's a free tool to do so, which I, I absolutely love. And if you were interested, these are just the different ways that you can pay for it. You can have the completely free version or you can pay for business class, et cetera. All right, I think Hello Bar here is my last one. Okay, great. So Hello Bar is my last tool that I wanted to share with all of you. Um, for any of you that have a website, um, you might've noticed that some people have websites with these really cool banners on top where it just like kind of shows the latest special or whatever is going on. Um, Hello Bar does the exact same thing, but it's free and it automatically, <coughs> excuse me, integrates right into your website. So you don't have to be a tech whiz or a website designer to make a bar or a banner show up on your computer, um, on your website. And you can see it has a, a ton of options. You can have one that's skinny on the top or is a pop-up box or takes up the whole page, but it is completely free to use. You just have to download it. It integrates into your website and you can design it any way you want. It's very user-friendly. Um, and it makes a, uh, you know, a, a pop-up banner and you can decide how long you want it to last. Um, but in case you were running a special or something on your website, this is a really cool one for website users that it's a completely free service. And like I said, with most of these, there are premium options that you can utilize, but it has the free version, which will do what most of you need it to do. Um, so with that said, I'm going to take a look at the questions really quickly. And because I know I'm a little over time, I'm going to go ahead and put the link to our survey in the chat here. So um, at the end of each of our sessions, we do just ask that you let us know how we did, what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, if you didn't like that, this is taking um, a little bit over an hour. I apologize in advance, but please do let us know. It's only a four question survey there. Um, for those of you that have to go, please do feel free to hop off. But I just have a couple um, slides on resources that some of you might be interested in. If you're not, I'm not going to be offended, but um, we got through all of the free tools, right? So please let me know how you, how you liked it in the chat. Um, or in the survey, if you don't want to tell me directly, you will be getting a follow-up email with the recording and the PowerPoint, like I promised. And I just want to make sure I get to everyone's Q&A that they put in here. So lastly, I'm just going to show you, these are some resources for additional next steps. So this was an FYI on what is out there, what can help you. If you're looking for next steps with any of these and you're thinking, wow, Trello was really cool, but you only spent three minutes on it, or Canva looks great, but I'm still a beginner. There are a ton of guides out there to help you with this. So I put these links in the PowerPoint purposefully so that you can go look at them later and figure out what's going to help you as a small business owner in the next step. Yes, the resources are in the PowerPoint. Yep. So if you have to hop off, that's fine. When you get this PowerPoint later, you will see all of these links. They're clickable. Um, and the next thing I, I was going to show you really quickly is... Um, these are just some quick tips on how to make your content better. We put these at the end of all of our social media series. But this here is um, the upcoming webinars that some of you asked about. So some of you said, well, how do I sign up for the YouTube one? How do I sign up for maybe Constant Contact or Etsy or some of these other cool tools? This will also be in the PowerPoint that you all get. And it's um, a link. You know, these are all links. So you are more than welcome to 
click on them, register for events, especially if you do YouTube basics, that's me again next Thursday. And that session is an hour and a half. So there is more than enough time for questions and Q&A. This one I tried fitting in here really quick. Um, but that was it for me. So like I said, there's just a two more slides in here on how to make good posts, um, but nothing nothing too high, high quality content here that you can definitely review on your own. And that was it for me today. So it's 103. I, I feel like I almost did it. I almost did it, but I seem, it seems like a lot of people had to hop off there. Um, so thank you everyone for, for your um, information in the chat. I hope you enjoyed it. I just see um, two questions in the Q&A here. So I wanna make sure I do get to those. Someone said, does Hootsuite allow you to share the different banner messages simultaneously? Since you get to make the images separate in Canva. Um, anonymous attendee, I'm not sure what you mean by banner images in Hootsuite, um, but if you're talking about, Hootsuite only does social media posts, but if you're trying to make multiple um, social media posts, you can add more than one image to a post if you want to. You can make tons of separate posts. It's completely up to you. Um, Hootsuite lets you schedule in advance, but it's basically just doing what Facebook and Instagram and Twitter already do. So for example, on Instagram, you can post multiple pictures. On Facebook, you can post multiple pictures. So it'll still allow you to do that. I'm not sure if that's the question you're asking because you said banners, um, but let me know if you, you need me to clarify on that. Um, and then someone else said, how often do we plan to post on social media? Yep, that's a great one. And so that's what I have in a couple of these insights here is just a couple little quick how to's that you can look at in the in the PowerPoint when you're um, when you get it, you know, at the end of the session. Um, making sure that you're posting quality over quantity. So a lot of people ask how often should I post? How often should I post? I recommend no more than once a day and make sure that it's high quality. So if you're thinking, wow, I cannot make five to seven posts a week. You know, if you're including posting on Saturday and Sunday, if you're saying that's just not possible for me, even with a scheduler, make sure that you're only posting things that are quality. So the worst thing you can do is say, well, Sarah said I have to make five, so I'm going to put five out, even if some of them are terrible. Please don't. Like if you're thinking that all you can handle right now is two to three a week, do two to three and make them high quality with nice graphics or nice content versus putting five mediocre ones out. Um, so it's really a mixed bag, but if you have the time and the capabilities, the recommendation um, across the board when it comes to marketing professionals is doing it one a week. Don't do more than, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, one a day, one a day, don't, don't, don't quote the one a week, one a day. And um, honestly, there have been a lot of studies that show doing more than one a day can cause people to unfollow you or become disinterested. So I, I really try to stick people to that one a day rule. Yeah, because just like this person commented, it can be, you know, there's a balance between being useful and overwhelming, right? So definitely um, you want to try doing one a day. And then someone asked, what should the mix, the mix be between articles, resources, and blog posts and things like that? I normally have people stick to what I call it's a one, two, two rule. So let's say you put five posts out in a week. That's normally what I stick to, you know, the Monday through Friday. Maybe you add a Saturday and Sunday every once in a while, but mostly I do Monday through Friday and I do one, two, two, which means that one should be about you as a business saying my, like, this is what my business is doing, or we just hired a new employee or something that just brings that human element to your business. Two should be promotional. Like maybe you just had a new product come out or you have a sale going on, but you don't want to be overly promotional because people get put off by that. But obviously you are a business, so you need to be moderately promotional. Um, and then two that are resources or blog posts or articles, things that you're sharing that maybe you didn't write, but that you saw on the Feedly or you saw on a Google alert that you thought would be useful to people. So that's the one, two, two rule that I use. One, that's a human organic, like this is me making my cupcakes or we have a new worker at the auto shop or whatever it is. Um, two that are uh, promotional and then two that are resource or article related is normally what I recommend. All righty. So I think that was all the questions in the Q&A and I appreciate you know those of you that are still on with me at 107. Um, I'm just gonna check the chat here because we had quite a few people coming in. All right, was referring to sizing. Sean, maybe you were the one that asked the question about banners, um, but when you move a, maybe this is what you were asking, when you move an image from Canva with that size, when you download it, it stays that size. So even when you upload it back into Hootsuite, it's the correct size. Um, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram doesn't resize it on you. Um, so 
as long as you like used the right social media sizing when you were in Canva, when you download it, it stays that size. So for example, if you made an Instagram um, Canva graphic and you downloaded it and you tried putting it on Facebook, it would still be a, an Instagram square. It wouldn't auto size it to Facebook. Um, so that is a really good point. So most of the times what I do is um, I use Facebook uh, event cover photo or Facebook, um, I'm sorry, what's it called? Facebook post, because that rectangle works really well on Facebook. It also works pretty well with Twitter and LinkedIn. Instagram is the odd man out with that square. Um, so yeah, you, you might have to make a second graphic for Instagram for it to turn out right. Um, or it gets it gets very like elongated on Instagram. Um, so that's just some functionality when you're scheduling that you might want to look out for if you use Instagram a lot. But if you're just using like Facebook, um, Twitter or LinkedIn together, the Facebook, um, the Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, I can't say it. The Facebook graphic does exactly what you need it to do. It'll fit on those three. Um, but obviously each one does have a slightly different um, sizing and when you go on Hootsuite and you try pushing to all four it's just going to keep the size of the one graphic you downloaded no matter what that was um someone asked about Instagram I feel like I don't know how to use it to full potential do you have any recommendations yes so we actually had an Instagram basics webinar in February and I know that was a super long time ago but it's um on our webs um well not on our website it's on our YouTube so if you go to youtube.com you type in uh, temple SBDC you can review that. It's Instagram basics for entrepreneurs. Um, it's also taught by me. And uh, I go through everything step by step, how to use um, Instagram posts, Instagram stories, Instagram video. We go over reels in the smallest amount though, because reels is more of like an intermediate level when you start using videos and things like that. But you are also more than welcome to meet with one of our SBDC advisors. Um, and we can talk with you more one-on-one -on, -one on how to do things like that for your business. So I hope that that gave you two, two different options if you wanted to do some self-learning or meet with our staff. Yep. All right, great, Sean. Glad I could clarify that. Yeah, so um, I know that's a bit annoying, right? <laughs> that the graphic doesn't automatically fix itself in Hootsuite. But um, that's just, yeah, that's just what it does. It does, it is very functional, but it's not that functional, if only. All right, I just wanna check the chat and see if I missed anything. Um, Someone said, can I consult to take my business to the next level? Yes, so I'm gonna put the email in the chat here <coughs> for our um, general email. It's sbdc at temple.edu. If you email that, they will give you the sign up link to meet with one of our staff one-on-one -on -one, and we can consult with you on your marketing strategy. Like I just said to Alyssa on your Instagram specifically, if you had a different question about financing or, you know, business loans or legal questions or any of that, our staff are available for, for all of those questions. So please, please, please do take advantage. All right, well, that is all for me. There's still 30 of you sitting on with me, so thank you. I must be super <laughs> engaging for you to sit on for an extra 10 minutes. But if you have questions, I'm here. Um, let me know. Um, if you have any questions, if not, I'm gonna I'm gonna close it out in a minute or so. I'm gonna put the uh, the survey in the chat here one more time for those of you sitting with me. Other than that, um, please do feel free to hop off and join us again for any of our other upcoming sessions. I'm always glad to you know have you online. Um, hope you enjoyed it and uh, hope to see you at some of our upcoming sessions. <laughs>